I mean, are, are you where you thought you, you'd be? Could you? None of us can actually, when we're young, we can't foresee where the journey's going to take us on. And I hope that whoever's, whoever reads this, rec we can recognise in our own lives, like, this is the better journey than I thought I would take. Wherever we are, it's the journey we were meant to take and we didn't know about it. So, so there's, 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 there's thankfulness and there's humility in that for all of us. Because I thought I was going to be a Hollywood star. I was just pretty enough to be arrogant and I could speak a few lines clearly. In fact, it was really, really embarrassing, but uh, the Daily Mail, I think, interviewed my first, um, my first theatrical agent. And uh, his name was Vincent Graff, and he'd be my dad's agent. And it was a hit piece, of course, anyway. And he said, Lauren Booth, better journalist than actor. And I'm like, you are my agent. How painful is that? <laughs> but he was right. How did you become interested in Palestine? Because I know after that period, you didn't do journalism. Mm. And yet, as you've outlined, there is a kind of phobia about talking about Palestine to the media generally. Yeah, I don't think they're too happy about it, that's for sure. Um, you know, the, the Iraq war in 2003 was really a catalyst for a lot of people to wake up to doing something. I remember that March, I was breastfeeding my newborn daughter, I was pushing my three-year-old in a buggy and it was an icy day was anybody there on that day it was like almost oh. snowing and i said to my three-year-old daughter i said this is not fun this is activism all right don't moan today we're, we're doing this for other people and she was so rock solid tiny little thing she was like i get it mom you know we're doing this for the people who don't have homes and they're going to be you know those were going to be bombed and we're going to do it for them but on the other side there were uh it was such a million person march i would say and there were the the jam making middle englanders who were just outraged and did not want to go to war and were brought to the streets so i always say tony blair radicalized me that should have been the title of the book oh no tony blair radicalized me oh, i missed a trick there maybe second edition so actually it wasn't an answer but you just brought it to my mind the jam making Do you know what, the, there was, uh, in, I think it was, was it 2009, the Gaza War in 2009, because it was before I was Muslim, I remember, and I gave a, a speech at that massive, that massive, uh, again, it went from 15,000 people turning up at pro-Palestine marches to very quickly, you know this better than me, 200,000, you know, and I looked out and I thought, the whole front row um, in the crowd were white middle-class English people and they had their children with them and they were crying because other people's children were dying and that's the connectivity it's about uh, are we human beings together or are we tribal human beings are, 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 you know I said I said to my children when I went to Gaza in 2008 with the free Gaza mission I said and they were eight and five years old big big ask of children I said look are you more important really than other children around the world no oh. are they less important mm -hmm. is their pain important it is the same as ours you know mummy go go and help the palace indians they thought there was an in there was a palace with indians who were <laughs> <paying. And laughs> I'm like, oh, please help the palace indians they used mm -hmm. to pray and it's the, it's that moment and i think we are connecting with that and i don't think whatever veils are trying to be drawn over this whatever uh, blocks are trying to be put onto our speech. Um, it's not working because the reality is people's hearts are touched, finally. So a couple of, of things from that. 